This video is all about the concept of non-stationarities in a signal. So what are non-stationarities and what do they mean? That's basically the whole point of this video. So let's start with a claim. I'm going to make the claim that the results of the Fourier transform are easily interpretable, easily visually interpretable, only for stationary signals. Now, I want to be clear about several things on this slide, several things about this claim. First of all, there's a distinction between the Fourier transform being a valid, correct, accurate operation, and the results of the Fourier transform, in particular, the amplitude spectrum or the power spectrum, being easily visually interpretable. The Fourier transform is always a perfect, valid transformation. It always works. It's always a brilliant procedure. It doesn't matter whether the signal is sinusoidal or rhythmic or square-shaped. It doesn't matter what the features of the signal are. The Fourier transform is always a perfect operation. But that doesn't always mean that the results of the Fourier transform are easy to look at and easy to interpret just based on visual inspection. And then my claim here is that the amplitude spectrum or the power spectrum from the Fourier transform is interpretable only for stationary or, you know, mostly stationary signals. Okay, so what does this term mean, stationary signals? Here's the definition for stationarity. A signal is stationary when its statistical characteristics do not significantly change over time. And therefore, a signal is non-stationary when the stationarity is violated. Okay, so this definition kind of makes sense. It's basically just negating the definition here. So the question is, you know, is this definition of stationarity a purely unambiguous, easily interpretable definition? And the answer is no. And I encourage you to pause the video and take a few moments and think about what are the ambiguities about this definition? What makes this definition be a little bit difficult to interpret or a little bit hard to interpret, a bit open to interpretation? Well, there are three sources of ambiguity in this definition. One is the statistical characteristics. And to be clear, these are statistical characteristics referring to descriptive statistics, not inferential statistics. But that leads to the second source of ambiguity here, which is what does it mean for the descriptive statistics to significantly change over time? That means that it's dependent on some statistical test and some threshold, some p-value or other inferential statistical value. And there's another source of ambiguity, which is not really explicitly mentioned here, but it's about this issue of time over time and what kinds of time windows do you use? All right, so this definition is intentionally left ambiguous because in our data sets, we generally don't actually formally test for stationarity. So I would like this to, to remain a bit of an intuitive concept. So let me give you some examples to build some intuition. And actually, first, I'm going to uh, talk about some of the myriad descriptive statistics. So what are the many descriptive statistics that you can use to describe a signal? This is, by the way, a non-exhaustive list. So we have descriptive statistics about the central tendency that includes measures like the mean or the mode or the median and so on. We have descriptive statistics about the dispersion of the data, and that's quantities like variance and kurtosis and heteroscedasticity, which is one of the most fun words to say in all of statistics. I think I'll even say it again, heteroscedasticity. That was fun. All right, anyway, we also have descriptive statistics that are related to the spectrum of the signal. So the dominant frequency, the shape of the power spectrum, the frequency stability, the amplitude measures, and so on. And then if we have a multivariate signal, we can also talk about covariant stationarity. So if the correlation structure across the different channels is the same or is changing over time. Okay, so these are some of the descriptive statistics that make the previous definition, so the definition of stationarity in the previous slide, a little bit ambiguous because a signal can be 
mean stationary, but variance non-stationary, and so on. Now I want to build a little bit of intuition about stationarity. So here I have a signal, and it's actually just pure noise, so it's just white noise, but this is just a signal. So let's imagine we are thinking about the mean, or the average. So the question is, the mean in this window here, is that the same mean as the mean of all the data values in this time window here? And by the same, I don't mean exactly numerically to, you know, 100 decimal points, exactly the same mean, but approximately, you know, within some reasonable tolerance, is the average value in this time window the same as the average value in this time window? I think we can all agree that the answer is yes. And that answer is also going to be yes here for this time window, which is larger, and for this time window, which is a little bit smaller and later in time. So in other words, when you look throughout time in this signal, the statistic that we are interested in here, which is the mean, is essentially the same, you know, within some reasonable tolerance. The statistical characteristic of this signal is the same regardless of where in time you place the window and also how wide that window is. So therefore, we can say that the estimate of this statistic, the mean, is independent of the size and location of the time window. Again, you know, this is within, within reason. So if you would take a window that includes only this one single data point, then the mean is just that data point. Obviously, that's very different from the mean of this data point. So, you know, we have to be reasonable here. But if we can say that the estimate of the statistic, the descriptive statistic, is independent of the size and location of the time window, then the mean is, uh, or then the signal is, in this case, mean stationary. So let me contrast that with this signal here. Now, this is also white noise. This is integrated white noise. So I take the cumulative sum of white noise, and it tends to show these, you know, a lot of smaller trends and, and larger trends that look like this. Looks a little bit more biological. It's called Brownian noise. It's just integrated noise, integrated uh, white Gaussian noise. Anyway, let us repeat the same experiment. So we start with a mean in this time window, and the question is, is that mean approximately the same as, oops, uh, the mean in this time window here? So this time window and this time window. And I think here we can agree that the mean will be different. In fact, it, it looks like uh, every single data point in this time window is larger than every single data point in this time window. So the means are definitely going to be different. The distributions of data values are non-overlapping. And then again, you know, we can play around with the window size. And so essentially what we've discovered here is that the estimate of the statistic, in this case, again, the mean, is dependent on the size and the location of the time window. So therefore, we would call this signal mean non-stationary. Now notice here that in this example and the previous example on the previous slide, I'm not suggesting that we should run a bunch of t-tests or f-tests or ANOVAs. I would like to leave this concept of stationarity more open and flexible as an intuition and not as something that we necessarily need to quantify all the time. That is in part because the quantification of non-stationarities on their own is a bit hairy, it's a bit difficult, and also because in neuroscience we deal with so much data that it's just not feasible to test every little strip of data for stationarity. And finally, the other reason is that the non-stationarities in brain signals is actually one of the primary motivations for moving beyond static spectral analyses into time frequency analyses. So in fact, we don't really need to worry a whole lot about the non-stationarities because we are going to be applying data analysis methods that are designed for assessing non-stationarities. Okay, so let me get back to this definition here. So a signal is stationary when its descriptive statistical characteristics do not significantly change over time. So here are the three sources of definitional ambiguities in this statement. So there are many features of signals. I showed that slide highlighting all the different descriptive statistics. 
the concept of statistically significant here is a little arbitrary and threshold dependent and it might depend on the exact test that you use. And the window size and location is also open to interpretation. Here I want to show you two more examples of signals that are stationary in some features and non-stationary in other features. So this signal, for example, is frequency stationary but amplitude non-stationary. So the frequency is staying the same over time but the amplitude is increasing over time. And this signal is the opposite. So you see the amplitude stays the same, but the frequency is abruptly changing in these three windows. Now you can also see that the concept of stationarity is dependent on the window size. So if you, you, know, if you would only look at this first third of this signal, Obviously, this signal is highly stationary within this little window here. So that's also an important concept for time frequency analysis, that you have brief moments of stationarity embedded in larger non-stationarities in the entire signal. Now, why is this important? Why is this concept of stationarity and non-stationarity important? It's important because the brain is highly non-stationary. In fact, it is no understatement to claim that probably over 95% of all of neuroscience research is focused specifically on the non-stationarities of the brain. So anytime you're looking at changes in brain activity after sensory processing, memory, language, any kind of cognitive processing, changes in disease or development, you're always looking at non-stationarities in the brain. Of course, there are also uh, neuroscience researchers who are interested in the stationary properties of the brain. And this is generally people who are studying um, anatomical connectivity, for example, how different regions of the brain are wired to each other. These are features of the brain that are relatively static. They don't change a whole lot over the course of your life or over the course of cognition, but anyway, the point is that nearly all of neuroscience and probably everything that you are doing if you are taking this course is focusing on the non-stationarities. So that's a really important limitation of the visual interpretation of the results of the Fourier transform. And you will also see in the next section of this course that that is a primary motivation for moving to time frequency analyses. All right, so enough talk. In the next video, I'm going to switch to MATLAB and I will show you some examples so you can see what non-stationarity signals look like in the time domain and how the, they affect the power spectrum in the frequency domain.